EOTEX just might be the most controversial optics on the market today. Some guys absolutely swear by them for the night vision performance, big sight window, and reticle design. Some guys absolutely detest them for the weight, bulk, short battery life, and persistent rumors of delamination, nitrogen leaking, and thermal drift. Ooh, that's a tall order. So here's a question for you. Can we get an optic that gives us the benefits of an EOTech, but without all the known downsides and shaky track record of the EOTech? I have a small pile of optics that you might consider to be EOTech alternatives, so we're going to break them all down and see which is the best not EOTech. The first thing we have to consider is why people buy EOTechs in the first place. There are some very good reasons for EOTechs continued popularity, and none of them have anything to do with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Number one is night vision performance. The EOTech is the unchallenged king of night vision compatible optics. There are a few factors that go into that. Number one is the basic glass clarity. EOTechs have large windows with no tint and exceptional light transmission. They are brighter and clearer than 99.9% .9 repeating percent of red dots on the market. The second part of that is brightness settings. EOTechs have significantly more brightness settings than any other red dot on the market. Most basic red dots will have 10 daylight settings and if you're lucky, 2 night vision settings. A lot of aim points break it up into 8 daylight settings and 4 night vision settings. Night vision compatible versions of the EOTech have 20 daylight settings and 10 night vision settings, so no matter what, you're going to find a setting that is perfectly suited to whatever the ambient light level is in your environment at your time of day. The granularity of the brightness adjustment might not seem like a big deal until all of a sudden it does. Night vision compatible EOTechs also have a very useful night vision button, which immediately drops the brightness into the night vision range. When it's in night vision mode, you cannot increase the brightness beyond the acceptable night vision range. And when it's in daylight mode, you cannot decrease the night vision into the night vision range. It's a very useful underrated feature. Beyond just the night vision performance, EOTechs also do better when magnified than most red dots. Most red dots have a 2 MOA centered dot. Because of the way holographic sights work, the EOTech has a center dot that's almost infinitely precise, and your eye resolves it as 1 MOA. So the center dot of an EOTech is nominally 1 MOA when unmagnified, but when you use a magnifier the dot doesn't get any larger, even though your target image does. So put a 3x magnifier behind it and it's more like 1 third MOA, 4x magnifier, quarter MOA, and so on and so forth. EOTechs also have extremely low parallax shift. All good red dots will have very minimal parallax, which makes them good for shooting from odd positions and at close ranges, but EOTechs have even less parallax than most red dots, which happens to pair nicely with the big window. That big optic window is the last big selling point of the EOTech. It makes it fast to acquire a sight picture from a ready position, weird angles, odd shooting positions, CQB work, etc, etc. This has nothing to do with field of view. Your field of view when using a red dot or reflex sight comes from your off eye not from your view through the optic itself, so just keep both eyes open. Most of the desirable properties of the EOTech are a result of it being a holographic sight, not a red dot. The technology that goes into producing a holographic image versus a red dot are not really important to this video. Suffice to say that there is only one other true holographic sight available on the American market, and that is the Vortex UH-1 Huey, which we are going to talk about today. The rest of these optics are traditional red dots, they just happen to have the form factor of an EOTech, big boxy reflex sights with large windows, and usually a big circle dot reticle. The EOTech we're using as our baseline is the EXPS3-0. The E means this is a lower one-third height optic with a QD mount, and 3-0 means it's a three series optic with night vision settings and the standard circle dot EOTech reticle. The two series EOTechs do not have the night vision settings and they never seem to be as well made as the three series, which is reflected in the water resistance ratings. The 2 series optics are only water resistant down to 10 feet, the 3 series optics are water resistant to 33 feet. Alright, on to the 5 way optics battle royale. Our first challenger is the Vortex UH-1 Huey Gen 2. As I mentioned earlier, this is the only other true holographic sight on the American market, although that means a lot less than you might think. The Huey is a bit of a behemoth among the largest reflex sights on the market and it weighs in at 11.5 ounces about half an ounce more than an EOTech EXPS 3-0. The Huey has a circle dot reticle similar to the EOTech, however, probably for copyright reasons, it's a little bit different. Vortex has gone with a segmented circle dot instead of a complete circle, and at the 6 o'clock position of the optic there is a CQB triangle, which can be used as a hold at close range. You can do that with the bottom of the circle on a regular EOTech, but the triangle makes it a little bit more intuitive. 
The Huey has 15 daylight settings and 8 night vision settings, almost as many as a real EOTech, and it also has a night vision button. That's a good feature, and it's implemented a little better than on a real EOTech. You have to hold the button down for a few seconds to enter or exit night vision mode. That's a nice idea. Even though the buttons on an EOTech are shrouded, I've still seen guys put their optic into night vision mode by accident by bumping it up against their gear. Similar to an EOTech, the Huey has an automatic shutoff after a couple hours, and it does not have a shake-awake feature. Unlike an EOTech, the automatic off can be fully disabled, which is a good thing. If you disable the automatic shutoff, you will have to be very careful to manually turn the optic off when you're not using it, or it will definitely drain itself in short order. And that's because just like an EOTech, the Huey still has terrible battery life. The Huey is powered on the same CR123 battery as an EOTech, and for some reason Vortex doesn't want to admit anywhere on their website or in the documentation what the battery life is, but it's reported to be approximately 1500 hours, the same as an EOTech. In a lot of ways, the Vortex Huey is a really well-made optic, and it's definitely an improvement over the Generation 1. The Huey has proper half MOA clicks, unlike other Vortex red dots which are still stuck with terrible 1 MOA per click adjustments. It has a really nice battery cap with a little flip up lever to help you remove it, it has good controls, it has a nice QD mount, and it sits at the lower one third just out of the box. But because it's made by Vortex, and Vortex has no idea how to make a good red dot, it's got all sorts of weird little problems. First of all, it has the classic Vortex refresh rate flicker problem. Instead of reducing the brightness of the emitter at lower settings, it just pulses it to give you the illusion of a dimmer reticle. That means it flickers badly, especially if you move it around. The non-symmetrical segmented circle reticle with the big gaps around the edges and the refresh rate means it's really easy to lose this reticle when you're transitioning from target to target. Also, despite the fact that this is a holographic sight, it still has a bit of a blue tint, which is really bizarre. In theory, that's one of the main advantages of a holographic sight. No tint whatsoever, and yet here it is. Also, for some reason, the reticle disappears in the bottom 15-ish percent of the window, so maybe the window is as big as a Neotech, but since part of it can't be used, I don't really think they get credit for that. The biggest issue, in my mind, is that the night vision performance just isn't there. Not only does the Vortex Huey have less brightness settings than a real Neotech, it also doesn't have the same level of glass clarity. I don't know if the tint is responsible, but the Huey is significantly darker than a real EOTech. Combine all that with the persistent rumors of parasitic battery drain when the Huey is left powered off and in storage for even as long as a month, that's not good. Our next contestant is the Sig Sauer Romeo 8T. I've already reviewed this one in full, so I'll just be very brief here. The Romeo 8T really embodies American exceptionalism. It's one of the best optics on the market, and it's also hugely obese. This thing is bigger and longer than almost every red dot on the market, and it weighs in at 13.5 ounces. The 8T does have more features than every other optic in this comparison. The reticle has multiple settings. It can be a circle dot, similar to the EOTech, just the dot, or a circle dot with additional ballistic drop dots below it. That gives it some expanded capability when used in conjunction with a magnifier. Although you can get EOTechs with additional ballistic drop dots, you cannot turn them off. The Romeo 8T is also powered by a single CR123 battery, but it has functionally infinite battery life. It's rated at 100,000 hours, plus it has SIG's usual MOTAC feature, which means it does shake awake and automatic off. The battery life on a single CR123 is so long that it will probably last beyond the expiration date of that battery. The Romeo 8T works great magnified, and it also has phenomenal night vision performance, second only to the real EOTech, and only because the EOTech has more brightness settings and the convenience feature of the night vision button. If we were just going off of glass clarity or light transmission, the 8T would be on par with an EOTech, possibly slightly better. Up next, the Leupold LCO. I've also talked about this one before, so again, we'll be brief here. Thankfully, this is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than a real EOTech, weighing in at 9.5 ounces. That's refreshing. Almost everything else I can say about the Leupold LCO is unfortunately negative. It does not sit at a proper lower one-third or a proper absolute height. It's kind of in the middle. Very, very annoying, especially if you're trying to use this with a riser or a magnifier or both. The LCO has four night vision settings and 12 daylight settings, which sounds pretty nice. It should be better than the Romeo 8T in that respect. Unfortunately, all of the NV settings are way too dim, there's almost no difference between them at all, and the lowest daylight setting is too bright for use with night vision and blooms way too much. The light transmission of the Leupold LCO is okay, but at that point, who fucking cares? The LCO is not a true holographic, it is still a red dot, and it's also powered by a CR123, but it can only manage about 1500 hours of battery life. Why exactly? I have no fucking clue. 
The LCO does have automatic off and shake awake, so at least it will last a little bit longer than you might expect. But now we have to go back to the bad stuff. Loophole uses the same refresh rate to control brightness settings as the Vortex, so as you reduce the brightness, it starts to flicker more and more. It's annoying when that happens at all, but the Loophold LCO flickers way more than even the Huey does. On top of all of that, you can see the reflection of the LED emitter and the surrounding circuit board visible in the glass in certain lighting conditions. Honestly, in most lighting conditions. In optimal conditions, all you see is a big gold smear surrounding the center dot. In suboptimal lighting conditions, including often under night vision, you see the entire circuit board, and it's just awful. Our final challenger from the budget end of the spectrum is the Holosun HS510C. This is the smallest and lightest of the bunch, weighing in at 9 ounces with the spacer that I have currently installed in mine. The 510C sits at the absolute co-witness height, but you can get a spacer for the mount that turns it into a lower one-third. You can't get those spacers for the HS512, which has an integral mount machined into the body of the optic. That's the main reason that I have the 510C instead of the 512, even though the 510 is an open emitter optic meaning that dirt, snow, rain, lint, whatever, can get in front of the emitter and cloud up your reticle, distort it, or block it completely. How often does that actually happen? Well, significantly less than you've been led to believe. It's not a good thing, I'm just saying. The HS510C is the only optic on this list not powered by the CR123. Instead, this thing is powered by a normal CR2032 button battery in a side-loading tray. It has the typical advertised 50,000 hours of battery life, 20,000 if you're using the full circle dot reticle. The 510C also has the usual automatic off and shake awake of Holosun optics, as well as a solar mode. And this one, unlike a lot of the smaller Holosuns, actually has room on board for a super capacitor. So there is a solar mode on the HS510C that can actually charge up an onboard capacitor and provide full brightness, making it the only solar powered optic that actually kind of works. The HS510C has 10 daylight settings and 2 night vision settings, just like most of the Holosuns. It has decent light transmission and a large window, but not great. The brightness settings are also not really sufficient to cover a wide range of environments. If you need the reticle to get dimmer, you can disable the outer ring and just use the 2MOA center dot. It's not perfect, but it does help a little bit. Okay, it's time to rank the EOTech alternatives from best to worst, starting with number 1, the Romeo 8T. This optic fixes most of the problems people have with EOTechs without losing much, if any, night vision performance and without introducing new downsides. But it is really big, really heavy, and basically the same price as an EOTech. Number two might surprise you, it's the Holosun HS510C. That's right, the other options on this list are so bad I would rather have a Holosun. The HS510C is cheaper and lighter and has much better battery life than an EOTech. If all you're really after is the big window and the circle dot reticle, this is actually a really good red dot. It's not something I'd toss on a combat rifle and take into the field or whatever, but for a home defense gun, a backpack gun, vehicle gun, it's not too shabby. Holosun's factory QD mounts are not so good though, so you might consider replacing it with a lower one-third riser from ADM. That will add about $100 onto the price though. Number three is the Vortex Huey. This is a really cool looking well-made optic, but it doesn't solve any of the EOTech problems and is in fact comprehensively worse. Still, you can get it cheaper than an EOTech and if night vision performance isn't that big of a deal and your brain is too stupid to understand refresh rate and you're okay with owning a holographic sight that doesn't do anything holographic sights are supposed to do, I guess you could get the Huey. Number four, the Leupold LCO. This would be a lot lower if we had more numbers, but we don't, so it goes here. This thing is just so messed up. Short battery life, refresh rate flicker, smeared emitter reflection, crummy night vision settings, weird mount height, and they're so expensive. I wouldn't recommend the LCO to anyone for any reason. Luckily I don't have to because they're discontinued. Thank God for that. So which one would I choose? I would still go with a real EOTech. You can't beat EOTech at EOTech. They've been doing it too long. They have a hell of a head start. Here's hoping Vortex comes out with a Gen 3 Huey soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this channel, you can support me via Subscribestar. There's a link in the video description, but you could also just like the video and share the video and comment on the video because that's how YouTube works, and you know how YouTube works. There's no way this is the first YouTube video you've ever watched, right? See you next time.